Yo, yo, what's up, what's up, man? It's the one only hip-hop game, a hot 9-7 Logitech G. Let's get right into it, all right? So as you see in the title, Grand Theft Auto versus Chicago City Council Marcus Evans, all right? So it's pretty much, I'm going to take on this whole uh, news topic because gaming always seems to be a scapegoat whenever there's problems in the world, right? So let's break this down, and I ain't going to let him escape with anything. Let's go. <laughs> Hip hop gamer. So here's the premise. The premise is this: Marcus Evans wants to ban Grand Theft Auto sales. He claims that carjackings in Chicago stems from the game. So that's his standpoint, right? I'll say it again: Marcus Evans wants to ban Grand Theft Auto sales. Claims that carjackings in Chicago stems from the video game. That's his stance, right? Now, my stance, what I'm saying is that he's lying and they are once again using video games as a scapegoat because they can't figure out how to accurately do their job right. That's my stance. So before we go, before we go even further, watch this video. An Illinois lawmaker has a new response to the recent surge in carjackings around the Chicago area. State Representative Marcus Evans says video games are part of the problem, specifically the game. Grand Theft Auto, whose first installment was released back in 1997. Evans plans uh, to introduce a bill to ban sales of the game in Illinois. Grand Theft Auto and other violent video games are getting in the minds of our young people and perpetuating the normalcy of carjacking. Carjacking is not normal and carjacking must stop. All right, so you saw the video, right? Now, the key thing that he said in his words in this video is that Grand Theft Auto and other violent video games are making it seem like it's normal to do real life carjackings in Chicago, right? That's what he said is making it look normal. Now, here's what the police department said. The actual police department out there in Chicago, here's what they said. Check it out. What we find in these carjackings are mostly just kids joyriding in vehicles said Howard Ludwig. Howard Ludwig is a spokesman for the Chicago Police Department, right? And then he says, I've not heard of any increase of stolen cars showing up at chop shops. The number one thing that we have seen is joyriding. Joyriding. That's the number one thing that the spokesman for the Chicago Police Department has said. Right. So why did I bring that up? I brought that up because joyriding was a term created by a judge in New York. I don't have the name, but there was a judge in New York in 1908. In 1908, when a lot of these things was happening, that's when the term joyriding came from. So the actual criminal actions that's taking place stems from what they call joyriding was coined in 1908. Last time I checked, the very first Grand Theft Auto game that ever came out was 1997. And that game don't look nothing like the Grand Theft Auto 3, you know, in terms of that game being an actual open world. Because Grand Theft Auto 1 and Grand Theft Auto 2 was just little, like, look like 8-bit top-down games. All right? So even within the Grand Theft Auto 1 and Grand Theft Auto 2 games, you don't even see... Um, the graphics and the realism, um, like how you see in a Grand Theft Auto 3 that debuted on PS2. It's so like that. But the point of the matter is this. 1908, Joyriding. All right? That's when it was coined. Grand Theft Auto didn't exist in 1908. All right? Why does this, make, why does this uh, matter? It matters because... Every time something bad happens, people want to use gaming as a scapegoat. Like, gaming is the reason. When these things existed way before the game and, and games, uh, period. You know what I'm saying? So, that's why I don't like when people try to always play the blame game. Because they can't figure out what they got to do within their uh, uh, job description. Alright? Now, let's move on. Now, the next thing I want to say is this, right? Uh, this is towards Marcus Evans. So, listen carefully. Carjackings first 
came to national attention with the surge of crack cocaine and semi-automatic handguns in the 1980s. Another reason for the increase in recent years, Bloomstein said. Then, they said, uh, it, um, is that drug dealers did not want to risk being caught in their own cars, which could be seized by police if drugs were found in them. So, why did I bring that up? So, if carjackings first came to national attention because of the surge of crack cocaine and all these other things that happened uh, in the 80s and stuff like that, Grand Theft Auto wasn't out, but we still talking about carjackings and the national attention that they got because it was huge. Okay? But this was in the 80s. It wasn't even in the 90s when he was referring to this. You understand what I'm saying? This is documentation. All this stuff is official documents. Okay? So why are we blaming games, blaming everything else but the actual source and root of the problem that happened way before these games existed? You understand what I'm saying? Most people, and just being human and just our characteristics, when most people that are very prideful in what they do, if they don't have an answer for something... They are quick to blame anything because they don't want the pressure on them because they don't have the answer. A lot of people don't have the courage to say they don't know. Like, think about it. If you are in a job position or you are the boss or the leader of something and people that trust you to know what you're supposed to do come to you and ask you a question, you don't want to tell them you don't know because then it's like, why you have this job? You could lose everything simply for not knowing. But the truth is, if you don't know, you don't know, and you're in the process of figuring out because we're all learning regardless of the position that we're in, in life, period. So to me, I just think it's real gutless and cynical for people to always point fingers because they can't solve things that they're supposed to be able to solve in their within their job description. You was brought on to do something, and because you can't do it or you haven't figured it out, let's just blame this, and that's it. It's not... That's not the way you handle things. You understand what I'm saying? So let's move on. All right. Conclusion number one. Conclusion number one. And the conclusion number one is this. Grand Theft Auto is a game reflecting what we see in real life. You know the, we know what they say. Art imitates life, right? So Grand Theft Auto is a game that's reflecting what we see in real life. And... um. And just to be honest, if they, the carjackings that you see in Grand Theft Auto, I'd rather have a carjacking in a video game than to have it in real life and somebody get killed over it and all this other crazy stuff. Because I could go play Grand Theft Auto and then go outside and have my freedom and chill and have fun. You know what I'm saying? And we all clearly know that difference. Because over 100 million people brought um, a, a Grand Theft Auto 5, the last one that just came out. Over 100 million people brought that, right? I don't see 100 million people robbing, uh, stealing cars either. All right? So I don't, so, don't, so you can miss me with all of this. It's Grand Theft Auto's fault. Okay? So that's conclusion number one. Conclusion number two is this. Is that these issues have existed long before GTA was even created. So to blame a video game instead of being accountable for the streets you're supposed to serve and protect is a pure cop-out to what the standards of your job is requiring you to do. Period. All right? So Marcus Evans, stop it. Stop it. You know what I'm saying? You are a uh, counsel for the Chicago, for Chicago um, uh, uh, politics and politicians out there. You're supposed to be the counsel for the, um, for the city. Stand up. You know what I'm saying? Stop putting all this blame game and they did this. No, we ain't, I ain't trying to hear that. Now, now, let's move on to the final thing I want to say. The final thing I want to say, and this comes in the form of a suggestion. And the suggestion is this. In the role of authority and leadership, the more you build relationships in the communities that you serve, the more internal change you will see in these people in the community. Okay? What do I mean by that? What I mean is, if you are just a person 
that's enforcing the law because you work in law enforcement, but there's no relationship within the communities that you serve, then all you looked at is a person with a uniform on, a badge and a gun, and that's it. There's no care. There's no sympathy. There's no empathy. There's no conversation. There's no nothing. You're just a walking badge and gun. There's no substance to what you do. But if there is an actual plan where the, the cops are cops that are driven by the community, where you take time out to get to know people in the community, have a relationship, they know your name, you know them. If there's a problem, like, yo, let me know, I got you. Like, you know, a real relationship, then internally, you will start to see the change in the community that you serve. Because I give you an example, right? With the carjackings or any type of robberies or problems that's happening, if somebody has love and respect for you because they built a relationship, they may think twice about what they want to do or problems that they're about to be involved in because of their care within the relationship that they built with you. They may think twice about that. Or they may come to you because they feel like they can speak to you in confidence that they got a problem or they low on funds or whatever and may seek help instead of just like, they don't care about me, nobody cares about me, I gotta do what I gotta do. And then next thing you know, it's another life loss in the system because nobody actually cared. People go through a lot of problems, especially in the hood. But y'all don't open y'all, y'all don't open y'all doors or open your hearts to people. All you are is a walking badge and gun, and then you talk about Grand Theft Auto is the problem. Get out of here with that, B. You know what I'm saying? So there's one officer in particular, Officer Norman, that's been doing community pol policing for the longest time. Um, I think in Arkansas. And everywhere he go, everybody in his community know who he is. Kids, adults, they run to, to his car. He, you know what I mean? Like, he has a real relationship. And you don't hear about these things happening there. There's a reason for that. All right? So that's my suggestion. You know what I'm saying? And to prove my point, I actually played uh, Tekken 7, a fighting game, with um, a fellow officer. And we had this very same conversation right after the George Floyd uh, uh, murder. And she actually agreed with me, too, that these things need to happen. Relationships in the community need to happen better, especially when it comes to um, um, cops and stuff like that. As a police officer, does it make you a bit more comfortable because of the relationships that you're building? Like, for example, right now, even though we're talking what we're talking, we just finished playing Tekken. You know what I'm saying? Having a good time. And yeah. you know how I look. I know how you look. I'm looking at you right now. So if I'm walking down the block and I see you across the street, I'm like, yo, Michelle, what up? What up? Like, you know, like, because the energy is there. And if the energy is there, you look at people different. And um, that goes back to why it's so important yeah. to build those relationships with people in the community. It, okay. all, it all ties in together. Okay. Uh, to me, honestly, I think that should be like, a part of the job, like uh, actual practice across the board within the entire police department, not just in New York, but all over. Because if the idea is to protect and serve, then it's hard to protect and serve if you feel disconnected to who you're supposed to be protecting and serving. So I think I that, agree yeah. agree completely. What's your name? Officer B. Okay, yeah. Officer B. He said that he's not a bad cop, but like, the good cops kind of suffer from the bad ones because the bad ones stick out more than the good ones. And so if you're on the avenue with where all the kids come to, of course they're going to see like, oh, he's a cop, he's this, that, and third. And he's going to be like, oh, oh, um, I don't want to like communicate with, communicate with him because of maybe past experience, past experiences. And I feel like Be honest, be real, be here for you, be here. I feel like there's situations where police could do more to help the community. I feel like there's situations where the police isn't there for like the right reasons. Like I feel like if a community is mourning, I feel like the police is not gonna be there emotionally. They're just gonna be there physically. All right. So if you wanted an answer, that's your answer. Stop blaming everybody else and build a real relationship 
in your community that you service. Take a lot of that money and invest it in the community so they can have places to go so we can do things and learn things and be taught things instead of everybody demonizing everybody. So Grand Theft Auto has nothing to do with this. You got to step your game up and be a leader. Period. It all falls on you. So stop looking for a scapegoat. And that goes for anybody. You already know what it is, man. Hip Hop Gamer, Hot 97, Logitech G, the best is right here forever. Love y'all. God bless. And I really hope that somebody that watched this learned something from it. Thank you. I'm out of here, baby. Hip Hop Gamer. Peace. Hip Hop Gamer. Logitech.